What is the worst thing your parents ever did to you? Truth be told, my parents aren't terrible people, but they did a lot of damage to me when I was young. They would make fun of me and belittle me constantly to the point that I was afraid I would fail at just about everything, often telling me I didn't have the drive or skill to do the things I wanted to do. They also heavily favored my brother over me to the point where even my brother's best friends would ask me, why do your parents love your brother so much more than you? One of my most painful memories as a kid was when our handyman, a Brazilian guy who would come over frequently to fix stuff that I always helped and worked with, looked at me with pure pity on his face and told me, I'm sorry that your parents can see your value. It fucking destroyed me, and 25 years later it still does. I was 21 in the Navy, and my ship was out to sea on maneuvers. While out to sea, my girlfriend was killed in a traffic accident. My mom decided not to contact the Red Cross Navy affiliate to let me know, because she believed I was doing important work and shouldn't be disturbed. Which was bullshit, because we were only gone for a month training reservists. And I remember that I told her, so I missed her funeral and didn't even know that she was dead for two weeks. My mom only told me that, when we pulled back into port. That was over 30 years ago, both my parents have passed away, and I'm getting angry just by typing this. A mild case myself, but they would gaslight me when I was in physical pain or was having physical issues unless I had irrefutable proof. They didn't take me to the doctors when I had bronchitis for over three months. They only took me to the hospital once when it wasn't for school mandated booster shots and only because I asked. I also had to physically show them my incredibly swollen tonsils for them to say yes. They denied me when I told them I had insomnia, insisting I just wasn't trying hard enough to sleep. And the icing on the cake? I once stepped on something that made my foot sting like a bitch. I suspected it could have been a scorpion, since it was the desert, but all I saw was dirt. Couldn't confirm, run into the house sobbing, but since I couldn't identify what I stepped on, plus it was lightly inflamed at the time, they said I was overreacting. Four hours later, I come hoping out of my room on one leg with the melted cold compress in hand, still crying. They seem irritated, until I lift my foot up for them to inspect again, and display the five fat ass blisters on upper pad of my foot and for toes. We realized later once the temp cooled outside that I had stepped on a still burning coal that tumbled out of the barbecue the dog knocked over. That one coal evaded cleanup and was covered in dirt, thus rendering it incognito to 10 year old me. It wasn't the initial thought that I was overreacting that seems wrong, but the irritation on their faces hours later when I was still clearly in distress that gets under my skin. And the next day was the first day of fifth grade. They still made me go despite half of my foot being burnt to shit. My mom drank heavily during the first five months of her pregnancy with me. I have fetal alcohol syndrome and I struggle every day of my life. And I always will, because of my mom's choice not to believe she was pregnant when she was. I try hard to make it through my struggles and I will never give up on myself. But this never had to be this way in the first place. She also hid the fact that she drank during her pregnancy from me till other family members told me. She thought that if she never told me and just forgot about it, then everything would be fine and dandy. I was a special needs child on grade school, but I had an incorrect diagnosis because my mom hid everything from me. She also was against putting me in special needs classes because she couldn't handle the fact that her only child was a special needs child. So it took a lot of talking between my school staff and her to get me into these classes. In the end, she denied having me put there, so I did not receive any help during school whatsoever. I had several strengths and took advanced placement classes in this subjects and did well in them so my mom thought that meant I should be in advanced placement classes for every subject. So instead of being in special needs classes for part of the day and other in a classes for the subjects I excelled at, I was thrown into advanced placement everything once I reached high school. I failed so many classes, and because I had no proper diagnosis, my high school teachers all thought I was lazy and unmotivated, and they heavily berated me for struggling. My mom stood on the sidelines, pretending like everything was fine, when literally nothing was. I ended up graduating high school and I got a bachelor's degree in music, which is what I excelled in. I wish I could say everything is going better now, but I can't. I have good days, but I also have a bad ones. I knew I would struggle as an adult but I didn't think I would struggle this much. She is a very ignorant woman, and I still hold so much anger towards her for doing this to me, then trying to cover it up. There's so many more things I could list here, but this comment would be as long as a novel. I will just say that she is someone who really should have never been a parent. 
I do love her, and we used to be extremely close when I was a child. But as an adult, I realized that the way she raised me set me up for failure. There are so many things I am trying to correct in myself as a 24-year-old. But unfortunately, the brain injury I sustained by being exposed to liquor in the womb will always be with me. I am 24, but my level of functioning is that of about a 16-year-old. This is all due to my mom's choices 24 years ago. My stepdad sexually assaulted me as a minor. My mother was out of town, so I left and went to the police department and then had another family member drive me to my mom. She manipulated me into retracting my statement from the police by telling me he would lose his job and we would become homeless and that all of our family friends would hate us. So I did it because that was a terrifying thought, which was humiliating as I basically had to tell the police I imagined it and it made me look super dramatic. I had to lie to CPS too. She did pretend to care and kicked him out for a bit, but then made me decide when he could come home, saying I couldn't just kick him out forever. So then he came back with the rule that we couldn't be alone in the home together until that became inconvenient for her. And that rule just kinda got dropped silently. Then he did it again, and she made up an excuse that he was drunk and didn't realize what he was doing. The whole ordeal was so embarrassing. I got treated like the problem and was manipulated by the one person who was supposed to keep me safe. We also got in a fight once when I had trouble finding a job after getting laid off because she was tired of helping me. I had only been jobless for about four months and spent every waking hour trying to find a job. She texted me telling me I wasn't trying hard enough and that she was tired of helping me out and a bunch of other really mean stuff. I eventually asked her to please stop because I had been having a really hard time mentally and she asked what I wanted from her. I said I guess emotional support and she said she could do that and to find someone else to do it. She also told me she loved my son more than she loved me. They locked me in my room for a year, only allowed to go out for school and bathroom. Had a really short hook lock placed at the top of the door frame so you couldn't even slightly push the door open to get it lifted up with something and get out. I didn't have a phone during that year either. So after school it was complete isolation. Since I didn't have a phone and they wouldn't get me an alarm clock, they would wake me up in the morning by throwing ice water on me. They wouldn't tell me what time it was and there were no clocks upstairs and I wasn't allowed in the kitchen when the stove and microwave would have the time. So I just had to guess how much time I had to get ready before the bus came. When they woke me up was inconsistent and sometimes they would sleep in and forget to wake me up so I would miss the bus and they'd make me walk to school no matter the weather. They also took away all my clothes and only gave me one pair of pants, a t-shirt, a long sleeve, and a jacket, and one pair of converse. So when it was January, and like 10 degrees at 7 am I'd have to walk to school with my backpack and art projects through the snow for about 2 to 3 hours. I wasn't allowed to use my locker at school because I might hide something from them, so I had to have all of my textbooks and notebooks and supplies for the entire day in my bag. That and they had me on ATMG of the vans when I was 90 pounds for whatever reason, and took them away out of nowhere, and when I had withdrawal and crashed, they threatened to send me to a mental hospital for my erratic behavior. There's a lot more but this all tied to what it was like just being locked up for that year. My mother had me tested for autism when I was three, always told me while I was growing up. I had you tested, you don't have autism, the signs were always there. The number of people who would ask me if I was on the spectrum because of various behaviors I exhibited was staggering, and every single time I would tell them, no, I got tested and the test said no. I spent well over a decade wondering what was wrong with me, why people would always ask or assume that I was on the spectrum. It made me a very easy person to manipulate, which led to a relationship that to this day has left me scarred and traumatized beyond belief. 20 years later, about a month ago, my fiancé and I went to a family reunion. My mother told my fiancé that she'd had me tested for autism. She refused to say the results only said that he doesn't need labels. That's how I found out that my parents lied to me for 20 years, told me I was normal, dismissed all the signs and behaviors as me being a wayward kid who needed to be corrected. Those behaviors led to abuse, neglect, and a whole host of other treatment, especially from my mother. The fact that I didn't know what was wrong with me caused me to spiral for almost a decade. The bullying, the manipulation, I could have taken steps to avoid all of it if I had known. I ate crutching on, I have disorder, as a rationale for my behavior, despise it with my whole being. But it would have done me a lot of good to know. My parents knew, the whole time, they knew exactly why I acted the way I did. 
all the little behaviors that earn the wrath of my mother. Everything from obsessively fixating on different subjects or topics in school. History, in particular the Mongols, have always been a favorite of mine. To bouts of frustration over menial things that would boil over without me even meaning to. To the fact that I use comparisons and analogies a lot when I talk because it helps me be able to explain what I'm thinking. She knew exactly why. She'd always get mad at me for not having like-minded friends to talk to. But she knew why I struggled to find people on my wavelength. She knew why I struggled to make friends, why I was alone all the time. And not once did she ever think to tell me why. Let's just say there's gonna be a very important phone call in the near future. Share your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Good luck.